history of earth sciences namaskar i am uh, m rajivan secretary to the government of india ministry of earth sciences i am very happy to be here and to talk to you regarding climate change and its impact on health uh, through the youtube uh, video as a part of uh, vigyan vigyan bharat initiative i should uh, thank the office bears of vigyan bharat for inviting me to give this presentation giving talking to you on the climate change and its impact on your health which is a very important topic i'll be briefly talking about this basic science of climate change and its uh, possible impact on health i shall also talk uh, regarding what we should do in india uh, regarding climate change and uh, its possible impact on health i will try to take up some questions if you have and uh, i'll try to answer the questions as all of you know that today is the uh, world earth day uh, 22nd april we celebrate uh, the world earth day to demonstrate support uh, for environmental protection and represent a day of action to shift uh, human behavior and also provoke uh, policy changes as all of you know that the uh, first uh, celebration took place in 1970 and by now it blew to a staggering global event with celebration in more than 193 countries involving over a billion of people so we took uh, this auspicious day of earth day to talk to you on climate change and its uh, possible impact on health i'll try to uh, talk to you in a very simple language so that you all people understand what i am talking as uh, you know that the earth climate system consists of uh, five spheres we call spheres uh, one is atmosphere a uh, second is the hydrosphere nothing but ocean and lakes rivers etc water basically lithosphere is the core earth and cryosphere is nothing but uh, snow ice sea is for some biosphere is basically forest and greenery life exists everywhere uh, on the earth because the climate is very favorable in this uh, planet natural variation of climate system arises from interactive feedbacks so these five spheres which i mentioned are not independent uh, system it's a interactive system all five spheres interact with each other and also is uh, interact in non linearly that is very important and the uh, system when we talk about earth system it consists of uh, solar energy coming from out of space and we have our own uh, components of the climate system as i told that atmosphere we have oceans we have rivers we have mountains and we have uh, in addition to all this natural system we have human activities we will be burning carbon dioxide we will be burning we will be releasing methane we will be releasing nitrous oxide all this system combined together we call it a climate system as climate system the atmosphere we have clouds we have aerosols we have radiation coming in come going out we have a lot of uh, trace gases in the atmosphere which also interact with the radiation and over the ocean uh, over the ocean we have uh, storms we have sea ice so all this system are a common end of the earth's climate system and all these are all interact uh, non linear with each other now question the first question we normally ask is what is the real cause for climate change and also the global warming which we normally talk as as i told in the beginning and uh, earth system receives energy from sun so sun is without sun uh, earth, earth would not have survived so uh, earth's radiation sorry sun's radiation will be received and that's a basic energy and any system receiving energy also should radiate back that's a law of physics any any body with a temperature more than 0 degree kelvin should emit radiation so they be called thermal radiation so earth also emit back and uh, so in long wave radiation or we call thermal radiation so energy which is being received from the sun will be equal what is the radiation going out so there is an equilibrium between what we receive radiation from sun and what we emit out from the whole earth system to the space these two are equal 
So that's why the mean temperature will always remain in equilibrium. If you take a whole real data, temperature data, and calculate an average, it will be about 14 degrees. The 14 degrees Celsius is the mean annual temperature of the whole world. And so that has come because there's a balance between what is incoming solar radiation and what is outgoing long wave radiation, or we call thermal radiation. And if any changes in this uh, two component of the radiation, it can have an uh, imbalance in the equilibrium and it can lead rise to different uh, complications or implications. In this case, the whole global warming or uh, climate change scenario, the sun's radiation always remains the same. Probably in the longer time scale, the orbital changes of sun, the solar, uh, solar, uh, sun, sun's uh, orbital changes, uh, sorry, Earth's uh, orbital changes can give rise to some changes, but very mi minimum changes in the solar radiation. But within this air system, a common end of the atmosphere, for example, can change, and it can induce changes in the thermal radiation, which is going out. So there is an effect called greenhouse effect. In the greenhouse effect is nothing, but you must have seen in agriculture, big agricultural land or agricultural universities in which plants, they grow within a greenhouse in which uh, it's a transparent and so, so solar radiation goes inside but the radiation within the system within the greenhouse doesn't go don't go out and uh, so what what basically it does is it warms up the uh, inside of the greenhouse so in the atmosphere real atmosphere also the greenhouse effect is uh, taking place what is happening is uh, we are uh, doing a lot of human activities for some we are having transport system, we have industries, we have so many other activities, we change our land surface. So it's all inducing, it's all causing a change or increase in the greenhouse gases. So what are these greenhouse gases? Basically it is uh, water vapor, that's the main greenhouse gas. But water vapor is a natural greenhouse gas. It is not, it's not controlled by human activities. But what are the greenhouse gases controlled by human activities are carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, some acid ozone. So all these greenhouse has gases uh, and it can, the concentration can be varied because of our human activities. And any change in the greenhouse, uh, the greenhouse gas concentration can have an imbalance between what we receive from air radiation, sorry, solar radiation and what we are emitting out in the thermal radiation. And the changes in the carbon dioxide and methane, what, what really it does is it doesn't allow the thermal radiation, it reduces the some radiation to go out into the outer space. It traps some more radiation into the Earth system. So what we do is, what we get is, we get the solar radiation and some more thermal radiation also we get back to the Earth system and which normally causes, which basically causes the increase in temperature. So we are getting little more radiation than the equilibrium uh, system. So we will uh, definitely will lead to an uh, increase in temperature. That's the basic principle of uh, global warming and uh, and as i told that uh, water vapor carbon dioxide methane ozone nitrous oxide these are all the greenhouse gases and these are all these are all caused the increase of increase in the greenhouse gases is mainly caused by human activities for example industrialization deforestation public transport land use changes etc Okay, and uh, and if you really see the concentration of the greenhouse gas data which we have, we started taking observation of greenhouse gases only very recently, 1914, 15, especially carbon dioxide. Eh? But we do have uh, old data, especially from uh, Antarctic ice cores. Uh, and uh, so if you really drill a, a new ice, uh, Antarctic ice sheet, we can take out the ice core and uh, maybe if you go very deep, you can go back to the past climate, even 5,000 years, even 10,000 years. If you go very deep, you can have still go back to the you know, past climate. So people take these ice cores and they measure. So carbon dioxide is trapped in these ice cores and you can measure the concentration at, in, on your lab. And uh, so then that kind of observations are available carbon dioxide, methane, etc. So at least for the last 2000 years data, with the reliable data, some of the reliable data we have. And it all shows 
that this kind of uh, increase in greenhouse gases has never happened last 2000 years very very clearly and uh, if you really plot uh, the concentration of carbon dioxide almost like a straight line the last 60 70 years it started decreasing it's kind of an exponential increase sharp increase in greenhouse gases especially carbon dioxide methane nitrous oxide etc this all resembles 1950s our industry station started and industry has been started because of that this concentration of increase we call it a hockey stick uh, straight line then a, a kind of up, upward increase in the greenhouse gases so there is no doubt that greenhouse gas concentration is increasing definitely it is increasing carbon dioxide we say nitrous oxide etc this all will ultimately lead to uh, global warming and also related to climate change and uh, as i told that uh, the first observation we started in 1950s and uh, the, uh, the famous observatory in mauna loa this is an uh, hill station in uh, hawaii in the us and a person called charles david keely uh, is uh, one of the pioneering person in taking observations of carbon dioxide he has started this observation in mauna loa still the observations are thanks to noaa us and uh, the observation very clearly shows that in the beginning it was somewhere around 300 ppm past the million concentration now it is really cost 470 or 418 and uh, substantial increase last uh, 50 60 years have happened and also in addition to the increase in uh, uh, concentration due to industrialization and uh, other human activities we also change our land surface for some agricultural land, we remove it, and we sometimes we remove forest and convert it into agricultural land. And some agricultural land we remove it and make constructions and buildings, etc. So we do make changes, a lot of changes in the land surface properties. This is our land surface, land crop changes, and that also can really change the climate system because land surface has a property called albedo, uh, how much radiation is coming and how much is reflected. And that will depend upon the nature of the surface. If it is a forest, it is less. If it is a barren soil, it will be more. If it is a desert, it will be more, etc. So the albedo also changes. So ultimately, the heat content, uh, which is absorbed by the soil or surface of the earth, depending upon the nature of the surface, the nature of the land. So we change this the land surface properties also. That also can induce some changes. Now, question is, if these are all happening, what happened? So what? So what? So, did you observe any changes in our climate system? We have observations of temperature, pressure, uh, rainfall, uh, humidity, etc. for the last uh, maybe almost 100 years now. And uh, if you really analyze that observation, do you see any changes in the observations? The answer is yes. First, I'll briefly mention about uh, global changes, what we observe. And, um, and before we discuss about the global change in the uh, climate variables, I would like to stress on two important aspects. One is the climate variability, so far we, we, we talk about climate change, change and climate variability can occur due to two reasons. One is an internal cause that is within the system and external cause. External case cause means something is influenced by outside the earth system. So for example, solar radiation. But as I told in the beginning, the intensity of the solar radiation has not changed much for the last few years. And it can be changed by rotation of the rate of rotation of the earth, etc., or orbital parameters. But that influence on Earth's climate system is very, very small. So what we are talking about is basically internal causes, and they are caused by. And we are talking about internal causes. There are two two types. One is a natural variability uh, caused by natural process. For example, like in a good example, volcano. Volcano is a natural process. It's not triggered by human activity. And volcano eruption can change the climate system because it can pump in a lot of carbon dioxide, a lot of ash, and dust aerosols into the atmosphere. It can cut off the solar radiation, it can cool the atmosphere and also surface of the earth for at least for one year, one and a half year. But it's a natural variability. But what we are worrying worry is under pregenic activities, basically the human activities, as I told in the beginning that our activity like industries and transport system and in many other uh, human activities are really increasing the, uh, the concentration of greenhouse gases and also it is uh, leading to climate change. So if you really take the whole global climate data, surface temperature data, 
the whole globe is warming. If you really take on the last 150 years data analysis, no part is missing. All the whole, whole world is warming. Of course, the, the, the level of warming varies from place to place. Most of the warming is, especially in the Arctic, is much higher than many other places. We call it the Arctic amplification. And uh, so as I showed that the warming is not uniform, it is, but everywhere it's warming. And uh, uh, probably the uh, places like uh, Northern, Northern Atlantic, in some parts of the US and some parts of India, it is small, small, the, the warming is much smaller than compared to other places, but everywhere it's warming. If we la take last 100 years of uh, temperature um, uh, and do a trend analysis, how much temperature change, it, uh, you get about 0.7 degrees. So. so I told at the beginning, 14 degrees is the mean temperature when we take the old data. But if now it is up 14.7, that's the meaning. So 0.7 temperature is increased. So it's, you, you should assume that it's a whole world. It's not one, one particular place. So this trend can be different at different places. And uh, second is, uh, if you, if you, and when this warming is happening, there is a recent years are systematically it is increasing from 1950s. Answer is no. The answer is uh, it is happening in recent few years. So if you take last 30 years or 40 years, the warming is unprecedented. That it never happened in the past. And uh, more and more years, if you take into uh, after 2000, uh, last 20 years, if you want to grade the, all the years in terms of warming years, highest warming every year, you can calculate the warming, how much it is warm, how much is the positive anomaly, and then you can grade it in terms of uh, ranking. Most of the top uh, 15, 20 years will be from the last 20 years. And that is uh, very, very alarming. So last three years, it is warming too high, and it's a very unprecedented warming we are witnessing. And when it is warming, it's basically the mean temperature is shifting. And if you know, if you uh, if you are some statistics student, you will know that if you are normally, if you, are not, if you assume that the normal distribution and uh, mean is changing, and also the variability can change. And uh, so it can change the mean, it can change the variability, both both the things. And it can, uh, and mean as well as variability can change. So there are three different scenarios. In all three scenarios, what is happening is the extreme events are increasing. To really see change the normal normal curve from by shifting the mean, you see that on the right hand side of the extreme points will change, it will increase. And even if a variability change, the mean is same, but the variability changes, that also causes a change in the exchange. So ultimately, the mean change in the climate changes the, basically the exchange. So that is more important. And if you, so it's not only temperature and precipitation, we have started analyzing data from sea level. If you really take last 100 years of, last few years of, not 100 years, last few years of data, we have cell observation from satellite, how sea levels are changing. If you really see that everywhere sea level is increasing, sea level is increasing because the water is, uh, water can expand, the so thermal expansion of sea level, ocean water can expand sea water, it's simply because of thermal expansion. And also many other reasons, um, sea level can change. And, but mainly it is attributed to thermal expansion of the water. You know, because of increase in temperature, and in many places the warming is uh, the sea level rise is uh, noticed, including India. And this also the sea level rise is not uniform everywhere; it changes from place to place. And another is uh, if, if you take last uh, 30, 40 years, uh, it has um, increased almost uh, 80 millimeter, 8 centimeter rain. Sorry, increase in sea level, global sea level rise. That is very appreciable uh, if you take last. Uh, 40 years of data. And as I told that the surface of the earth is warming not only over the land, but also over the ocean. And uh, over the ocean also, not only at the sea surface, the uh, warming is happening. The warming is really going inside the ocean. It's a deep ocean which is uh, increasing. So if you take the first 500 meter and calculate so-called the ocean heat content, the ocean heat content is increasing. So we have observations. We put a lot of observations uh, and measuring uh, the temperature profile is in different uh, instruments. You can measure the temperature profile in the, the versus depth. And those observations very clearly say the ocean heat can, and if you really calculate the first 100, 150 meter, it is increasing appreciably. So ocean heat can, so it's not only really ocean surface, the first uh, few hundred meters, 
also is warming up uh, that also warming very alarm another important aspect is about whatever carbon dioxide is emitted so, and almost 50% of carbon dioxide is absorbed by oceans ocean is plays a important role in absorbing carbon dioxide and only few uh, few percentage is uh, uh, available in that atmosphere and which will cause the global warming and so once our carbon dioxide is absorbed acidity changes the ocean acidity changes so acidification of ocean is happening everywhere and uh, observations of acidity ph value we have to really calculate it's also showing a, a decrease in ph values and most important uh, aspect we noticed last few years is the ice so sea ice melting over under arctic arctic sea ice melting is very very alarming and uh, these observations are available using uh, defense satellite of us they are taking they have been taking observations for last uh, 30 years or so very systematic observations and uh, these observations can be believed trusted and if you really see these observations it clearly shows that uh, under the arctic sea ice is melting very alarming the the minimum so it has a cycle annual cycle it, uh, the lowest uh, sea ice will be observed sometime because it's in our hemisphere sometime sometime in september and if you really calculate uh, the values such each year of september it shows very drastic decrease in, uh, especially last 10 15 years drastic decrease in september uh, arctic sea ice and model climate model projections very clearly say that uh, in next year 30 40 years we may see an arctic sea ice without the sea ice in uh, summer so that is a very very alarming signal and uh, so so this i talked about the global uh, scenario so question is uh, do we see the same kind of uh, trends and our changes in over india we, we also have observations of daily for india trends are this here also india also temperatures has been increasing Here also, if you take last hundred years, the temperature has changed about 0.6 degree or so last hundred years. So it is almost very equal, uh, very close to the global change of 0.7. So almost the same value. The India also everywhere is warming, except for a few pockets somewhere in Rajasthan and some parts of Bihar. Otherwise, everywhere it is warming up. And but whereas if you take the rainfall, we are very lucky. We Indians are very lucky. We have two good monsoons. One is southwest monsoon, and one is northeast monsoon. If we take last 100, 125 years of data, rainfall data, and analyze the trends, we see that the uh, monsoon is a very robust system, very very robust system. We have, if you take all India rainfall, there's not much change. The monsoon rainfall is very steady. Of course, there are regional variations. We have kind of states like Kerala, Chhattisgarh, some parts of Bihar, rainfall is decreasing, but many parts of Maharashtra and some parts of Gujarat, Karnataka rainfall is increasing. But if you take an all India average. in fall is almost the same uh, stationary but there are year to year variation which uh, you know that imd has been trying to predict and also if you really see that drought the drought is an event in which rainfall deficiency is very large uh, and if you really calculate the drought frequency uh, and also the how much area it is affected in the country uh, the drought area the area covered by drought is increasing increase has increased last a few years and so there is a big change in the drought frequency as well as uh, drought area covered by drought and another is the extreme weather events extreme rainfall for example you must be remembering the famous 2005 monsoon, monsoon rainfall over uh, bombay and many places uh, one day rainfall is exceeding from 50 cm 60 cm that kind of heavy rainfall is happening in many places in any monsoon season you will notice that on fine morning when city is completely flooded mainly because just due to the corrosive surface fall was very high it was very unprecedented thing for so we have made a lot of analysis using last 100 years of daily data and we found that the frequency of such kind of heavy rainfall events also is increasing especially over central plains and uh, especially over central plains of india where all these weather systems come and move so frequency of uh, heavy rainfall and associated flood you must be remembering the famous flood of uttarakhand flood and the uttarakhand plus flood has really caused a havoc in that region and such kind of flood events also is increased that's all due to we we call rain storms and uh, so if you really calculate the frequency and uh, the the intensity of rain storms that also is increasing 
and uh, the second is the heat wave uh, the famous uh, i don't know how many of you heard about uh, european heat wave in 2003 uh, now you must be hearing the people dying in europe because of the covid 19 same kind of casualty happened in 2003 simply because of the heat wave a heat wave which lasted which persisted about almost two weeks you will not believe in countries like france and germany and italy more than 45000 people died in just two weeks mainly because the people are not able to cope up with that kind of strong severe heat wave and uh, many studies have shown that this kind of heat wave in europe until especially 2008 wave is mainly because of a uh, 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 part of the global climate change and it should not be i they have done a very detailed analysis of uh, it's it's uh, we call normally attribution attribution study a particular event can be attributed to climate change so people have done many studies of attributing that event to climate change and they found that beyond doubt that is a part of climate change a 2003 heat wave so that is happening in india also india also many places in summer especially march april may june even up to june we receive uh, we experience this kind of heat waves everywhere uh, including uh, especially central and the northwest india and here also we analyzed a lot of data and we found that heat wave frequency as well as the spatial uh, extension as well as the duration of heat waves is increasing uh, over in another uh, important so so the question is that sir what we what we experience so the question is what will happen in future uh, whether these events can persist or whether this kind of strong events will persist in future so that can be done only by modeling and so we have uh, so called earth system models and recently our ministry of science has developed a uh, institute in pune center for climate change research has developed a system model it's the first time we developed this kind of model and uh, that model can be used to project uh, what will happen in future scenario climate change scenario and for that what we uh, what we need to know is uh, uh, what will be the future uh, usage of fuel uh, how much we will use whether we will use the current scenario is so called we call as business as usual or we will do drastic cut in the fuel consumption and that kind of scenario so we can make projection depending upon what kind of scenario we are of and so we can have three options or four options we can have so such kind of scenarios we can estimate and from there we can estimate how much climate will change and what are the implications what are the implications it, it of course it needs a huge computing power thanks to government of india our ministry of science have a huge computing power now in the mo ministry of science has the highest biggest uh, computer and also the fastest computer in the country so we are using the computer and running this models climate models and projecting as next 50 years 60 years 70 years what will happen to our indian climate scenario and these reports will be submitted to the ipcc climate change assessment which is going to come out in 2021 and understand the first draft of the uh, working group one is already out and people are uh, it is in the review process now so indian uh, uh, the cells have been uh, communicated to them that will be part of ipcc so climate models can be used uh, for understanding which climate change change and i will briefly mention uh, what are the what the climate models are saying about india the temperature if you assume that the business as usual will change about 2 degree 2.5 degree uh, from compared to present year there will not be change in the monsoon rainfall and so it will be very stable for the next few years it's a good 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 signal and uh, but there are changes in uh, heavy rainfall heavy rainfall is going to increase more and more and more of it can heavy rainfall events can happen in future and uh, uh, about uh, temperature uh, we are going to experience more and more heat waves or warm days we call warm days but cold nights and cold events will be decreasing sharply so we are shifting from a cold phase to a warmer phase so we'll have more and more warm days and warm heat waves for us the cold nights and the cold uh, so but you may be remembering this year this year winter was very pretty bad and uh, so that's a, a kind of an outlier but normally we should experience more and more heat waves and cold sorry warm days but less and less cold waves and uh, cold nights so these are some of the expectations so next 30 40 years what we are experiencing is uh, we will experience is increase in surface air temperature and humidity will increase because the temperature is more you can have more temperature humidity and increase in uh, heat waves Increase in extreme weather like heavy rain or strong rains, 
an intense tropical cyclone. The frequency of tropical cyclones may not increase, but when a tropical cyclone form, it will intensify into a very, very severe cyclone. The probability of intensification is very high in future climate. So we'll have definitely we'll have cyclone like Pani, etc. Uh, very frequent cyclones we can expect, and also convective storms and uh, like thunderstorms, etc. And no change in mean monsoon rainfall. We should be also we should be all happy. And uh, also uh, the variability of monsoon, both the sides, on flat side as well as drought side, both the sides it will increase. We will have more and more flat and more and more. The variability is increasing. And of course, increase in sea level, uh, mean sea level, and also it will lead to a coastal erosion. So these are the, some of the things which are very certain. And the, recently, a study has come in the global climate system. Are there any tipping points? That means points of no return. This is beyond, beyond repair. So they have identified few uh, climate tipping points, almost eight or so. I will briefly mention what are the tipping points. One is the Arctic sea ice, which I mentioned in the beginning, and uh, green, green, Greenland ice sheet, and uh, boreal forest in uh, US and adjoining Canada, Amazon rainforest, which is in the, uh, the climate tipping point, Western Antarctic ice sheet, Eastern Antarctic ice sheet, ice. Ice loss is oscillating, and Atlantic circulation, ocean circulation, which is very vital for controlling the climate of both the US as well as Europe, it is also slowed down. It is happening, and uh, permafrost in uh, uh, in uh, USSR, in sorry, Russia, eastern part of Russia, coral reefs of the coast of Austria, Australia. These are all some of the tipping points which uh, people have analyzed and found out and published very recently. So if you really see the, the recent report World, World Economic Forum, what will be the 10 most important risks over the next 10 years? It is, it, is, it is defined by World Economic Forum. They talk about economy, they talk about money. You will not believe that they have identified the events which are related to climate change as the most important risk, 10 risks in the, 10, in the number of uh, for next 10 years. I'll start. The first one is extreme weather. They put in the top most. Climate action failure. That is very important. Climate action failure. We should take actions to, to control the climate change. That is failure, failing. So that's climate action failure. Natural disasters is the third. Biodiversity loss is the fourth. And human-made environmental disaster. The first five all related to climate, our Earth system climate. And that's very interesting. Next is, of course, uh, data fraud, cyber attacks, water crisis, crisis, global governance, et cetera, et cetera. So this is very important. So we should uh, remember that uh, the Earth, uh, Earth climate change and as well as associated risks are the most important risks which we need to really understand. And there is recently a study in Lancet that has uh, made a kind of a computer model simulation. And I'm not sure how, how, how good these simulations is. But uh, that is very clearly showing is India will witness about 1.36 lakh deaths by 2050 attributable to climate change. And China will register much more, 2.48 lakh deaths. And if you really see the analysis, most of uh, developing countries or countries from, for example, Africa is going to have more deaths than compared to uh, big countries or uh, developed countries. So what um, I'll just briefly mention whether this, all these observations are not known to the government or government is not aware about this climate change. The answer is yes, government is aware, government is serious, and, uh, uh, and they have come out uh, a kind of a policy which is related to UN and FCC, and they have told that uh, many countries have committed, it's called intended nationally determined contributions, but INDC, we have made some commitments that to combat the climate change, we will do the following. So we, India, India has made very, very, very systematic and very sincere commitment to combat climate change, we should appreciate our government. And uh, one is uh, to reduce climate uh, emissions intensity of its GDP by 33 to 35 percent by 2030 compared to 2005 level. And I also achieve about 40 percent cumulative electric power installed capacity from non fossil fuel based energy resources by 2030. Of course, with the help from Green Climate Fund and all. 
and also to create an additional carbon sink of 2.5 to 3 billion tons of carbon equivalent through additional forests and tree cover. Forests also absorb carbon dioxide. That's why we are saying that don't cut trees, don't uh, deforest, do the deforestation, but make, make more plants and plant more trees, etc. Mainly because it is it is acts like a carbon sink. So this is the commitment that the government of India has made. So we should be happy. And whatever we can do, we are we are trying to do it. As all of you know, that India's policy and especially non-conventional energy sources like uh, wind and uh, solar energy, we have been we have been investing hugely in, uh, in in really increasing the capacity from solar energy as well as wind energy. Now, uh, last part is. If all this thing happened, what could be the implications? What, where are all these areas where this climate change can affect? It can have affect. It can affect many areas. Only, of course, health, which I will be talking next uh, five minutes, five to ten minutes. And uh, second is agriculture. It can really devastating um, effect on agriculture. Water, for example, future if a water stress can be expected because of climate change. I will not go in detail of those aspects because I will be more talking about health issues. And the energy, for example, and natural disasters. So these are the areas where impacts of climate change can really happen. So next few minutes, I will talk about what could be the implication of climate change on uh, health. And uh, climate change threatens human health and well-being in many ways, including impacts from increased extreme weather events, wildfire, decreased air quality, uh, more air pollution, threats to mental health. I'll talk about mental health later and healing, illness is transmitted by food, water, uh, disease carriers such as mosquitoes, etc. And uh, so climate change can affect human health in two main ways. One is uh, first is by changing the severity or frequency of health problems that are already affected by climate and other, or other factors. It's the first uh, way it can affect by changing the severity or frequency of health problems that are already affected by health, sorry, climate and or weather factors. Second is by creating unprecedented or unanticipated health problems or health threats in places where they have not previously occurred. So these are the two ways that climate change can affect our health system. So I will briefly mention about how little more detail about uh, the impact of climate change on human health as we discussed in the beginning that uh, because of the climate, global warming as well as climate change, what we are experiencing is rising temperatures and uh, more uh, extreme weather events and uh, sea level rise and also increased level of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. This can lead to severe weather, air pollution, change in the vector ecology, uh, increasing allergens and water quality impacts. It can affect the water quality, water and the food supply impacts. Environmental degradation and lost is extreme heat. And uh, because of this, there could be uh, a huge impact on health. For some, like, and start with air pollution. The air pollution can increase asthma and it can lead to cardiovascular diseases. And change in vector ecology can lead to diseases like malaria, dengue, chikungunya, which is very common in India. And uh, Increasing allergens can cause respiratory allergies and asthma and water quality impacts can lead to uh, diseases like cholera. Cholera is very important and uh, harmful, harmful algal blooms that also is a huge uh, uh, threat to the, uh, our health system. And water and uh, food supply impacts can lead to malnutrition, diarrheal diseases, etc. And uh, environmental degradation can lead to forced migration. We, we must have heard about uh, military uh, war refuges, refugees in the past. Many countries, people just leave the country the war is happening. They are not able to stay back. Now, because of climate change, also refugees are happening. It's called climate refugees. And it just happened a few years back, a couple of years back in Maharashtra, when the, there was a lot of water stress. Maharashtra had a three, three, uh, three years consecutive drought. And many parts in Maharashtra are reeling from drought, and many people started moving out of Maharashtra just to save themselves from the stress because of the water stress and as well as the drought. So, climate refugee is now a part of our social life and is going to increase in future. 
and because of the extreme heat and we can expect the heat related illness and death and also it can heat waves for some it can increase cardiovascular failure and when we talk about um, the impact of climate change and health then there's a word called vulnerability um, so we should discuss it vulnerability vulnerability uh, depends upon three factors nothing but uh, exposure how much you exposed to the system sensitivity is the degree to which people or communities are affected either adversely or beneficially some some benefits are happening for example uh, as i told that cold waves as well as cold uh, Uh, cold temperatures are decreasing, so the countries where we normally have the uh, diseases because of the cold temperatures also can now it can be reduced. So there are some some areas where we, people can expect a benefit in the health system, but in general, it is all adverse impact of climate change on health system. The third is adaptive capacity. So exposure, sensitivity, and adaptive capacity will lead to how. Whether a person or uh, is expected to be exposed to health threat or not, uh, depending upon these three factors. I'll start from air quality. The climate change is projected to harm human health by increasing ground level ozone as well as iron ore particulate matter. When we talk about air pollution, Delhi, we always talk about PM 2.5, etc. We never talk about ozone. Ozone is a very poisonous gas, especially I'm talking about surface ozone. Ozone in the surface. Also, in the stratosphere, about 20 kilometers and up in the atmosphere is very good because it uh, cuts off the, the harmful ultraviolet radiation from sun. But the ozone on the surface is very poisonous, so we should not have. We should have as much as low concentration of ozone. But ozone yeah, concentration on the surface is increasing, and that can really lead to many complications in the health. Ground level ozone is associated with many health problems such as diminished lung infection, sorry, function. Increased hospital admission, etc., and factors that affect ozone formation is basically heat, concentration of precursor chemicals, methane emissions, etc. While uh, PM 2.5 or PM 10 uh, is basically because of uh, transport, uh, construction, road, road transport, industries, etc. By increasing the, these uh, different factors, climate change is projected to lead to Increased concentration of ozone and particulate matter in some regions. So we need to understand how climate change is going to affect the air quality in future. And now, the deteriorated air quality also will give back a few kind of feedback to the climate system. So both are a kind of a chicken and egg problem, and so both are interrelated each other. Next is allergens, and climate change is projected to worsen asthma problem. So people who have asthma problem. We will have serious issues when climate change is really happening, and climate change resulting in more frost, frost free days in India, especially warmer seasonal air temperature, can contribute to shifts in uh, flowering time and pollen initialization, initialization from allergenic plant species. An increased carbon dioxide by itself can elevate production of plant-based allergens. So, in this, this is the season uh, we get a lot of this kind of allergens and this kind of asthmatic problem. Especially, I understand people in cities saying in Bangalore, normally they experience this kind of issues, and normally people I remember people stay in Bangalore, move out of Bangalore during this period, and they go back after a couple of months when this pollen and all is reduced. So this is a basic serious issue, and simultaneous exposure to toxic air pollutants also can worsen allergic uh, responses. The third is next is extreme temperatures. As I told, extreme heat events, events are increasing. And it's causing heat strokes and death. Uh, and urban heat island is a, a kind of a phenomenon or kind of a, a process in which uh, big cities uh, inside the city the temperatures are much more than compared to the outer outer limits of the city. And they mainly because inside the city there are a lot of uh, concrete buildings that can trap the, uh, the temperatures or warmer warmer air. So temperature in the inside city could be even three to four degree more than. Temperature outside the city, so this is called urban heat islands, and that combined with an aging population and increased urbanization are projected to increase the vulnerability of uh, urban population to heat-related health impacts in the in the future. Then precipitation extreme, heavy rainfall, flooding. You know, immediately, the flooding or heavy rainfall can cause uh, damages, physical damages, and the uh, immediate health hazard. And but is followed by. Uh, elevated waterborne diseases can be outbreaks can be reported 
uh, can be expected and many countries even after for example tropical cyclone when it comes and rains heavily when it goes out then we normally see uh, waterborne diseases in many places so immediately people take care of waterborne diseases so when we expect more and more intense tropical cyclone more intense rainfall in the future we should expect this kind of frequency of waterborne diseases diseases also to increase in future and uh, another aspect is water induction into buildings when flooding happens can result into mold contamination that manifests later leading to window air quality problems also exceeds the drought as i told in that there are two uh, two extremes of drought and floods and the, the drought also poses a risk to public health also safety the drought condition may increase the environment exposure to a broad set of health hazards including wildfire dust storms can happen during uh, drought and extreme heat events can happen because of less rain and uh, the surface is very warm and uh, degraded water quality can be expected and reduced water quality and loss of quality can be expected during drought so this also can lead to many issues uh, of health issues related to people and as i told in the a few minutes before the climate refugees could be a part of uh, drought and uh, the diseases are caused by vectors are uh, carried by vectors climate is one of the factors that influence the distribution of diseases borne by vectors such as uh, mosquitoes for example the geographical existence and distribution of vector populations and disease that can carry depend not only on climate but also on land use socio economic and cultural factors etc so daily seasonal or year to year climate variability can result sometimes in vector and adaptation and shifts or expansion in their geographical uh, regions and uh, food and waterborne aerial diseases that also is very important uh, um, kind of area health impact um, area where it is related to climate change for some exposure to variety of uh, pathogens in water and food causes aerial diseases air and water temperatures extreme rainfall events and seasonal variations are well known to affect disease uh, transmission especially aerial disease etc and human and for example human exposure to water borne diseases can occur via and drinking water as well as recreational water for some recreational water i can give an example of uh, people going to beaches and playing and uh, we have uh, in the ministry of science as institute in uh, chennai in ccr and they are looking a lot of sea water quality measurements for last few years and we found many beaches in which people go and uh, do all this recreational activity the water quality is very very poor very poor it really affects your health so uh, this kind of issues are also uh, in future it is, this kind of issues will increase more and uh, then the next is aspect is uh, blooms of algae as i told the frequency and uh, range of all, uh, harmful blooms of algae are increasing in especially in lakes and ponds and they are closely related to climate factors projected changes in climate could affect algal blooms and leads to increase in water and foodborne exposures and subsequent cause of cases of illness and of course algal bloom is also unknown in ocean area and food security is another big threat uh, because of climate change globally climate change is expected to threaten food production and certain aspects of food quality as well as food prices and distribution system and many crop yields are predicted to decline due to the combined effects of change in rainfall severe weather events and increasing competition from weeds and pest on crop plants livestock and fish production also is projected to decline and this will affect the prices of food so food totally food security is uh, very much linked very much uh, influenced by climate change the last aspect is the mental health and the first is following a disaster mental health problems increase normally and uh, but some people with no history of mental illness also have this mental uh, issues will happen and those at risk a phenomena known as common reactions to abnormal events and uh, so these reactions may be short lived or uh, in some cases long lasting secondly some patients with mental illness are specifically especially susceptible to heat and uh, people say that suicide rates the people committing suicides vary with weather and rising with high temperatures suggesting potential climate change impacts on depression and other mental illnesses another aspect is amnesia the, the memory loss is a risk factor for hospitalization and death during heat wave heat wave amnesia is uh, going to increase 
So more vulnerable than most is uh, climate change. Basically, um, some of the existing health threats that national now faces, and the people and community are especially vulnerable, including children, elderly, the sick, the poor, and uh, are vulnerable to this kind of uh, threat uh, due to climate change. So prevention is one way; it is good. Prevention provides protection. But so public public health actions, especially preparedness and prevention, can do much. To protect people from some of the impacts of climate change, we should do it. Early action provides the largest health benefits. Any threats increase, as threats increase, our ability to adapt to future changes may be very, very limited. So we should uh, start uh, preventing uh, this kind of uh, things before it uh, uh, makes into a kind of a serious issue for whole people. The next is very, of course, uh, there was a cartoon published by World Health Organization how health impacts are unfairly distributed in the world. As all of us, uh, all of you know that uh, developed countries like US, US, sorry, the, uh, Europe, except the Canada, Australia, these are the major countries contributing to uh, more release of fuel, fossil fuels, and basically causing more climate change issues and also the global warming, especially. And, uh, but if you really calculate, uh, uh, if you really calculate the estimates of per capita mortality from climate change. WHO has done that analysis. The per capita mortality in developed countries is much, much, much small. So the cap per, capita, per capita mortality is very high in uh, countries like countries in Africa, South Asia. So developed countries like US, Europe, Australia, etc., many a lot of fossil fuels causing global warming and climate change. But ultimately, the health impacts, when you talk about health impacts, it is more severely affected by people in Africa and South Asia. So this is a very unfair distribution of health impacts in the world, which WHO has clearly acknowledged and published the report. So that is a very important aspect which we should uh, remember. And when we talk about now it's a COVID-19, not we're talking about COVID-19, we are all be very careful. And uh, there was a question whether the Warming temperature can control COVID-19. Already people are given the statement saying that no, uh, warmer temperature, there's no clear evidence that warmer temperature will control the spread of uh, COVID-19. Even WHO has come out with kind of uh, uh, press release saying that we should not expect um, uh, exposing to a higher temperature will control, uh, will, will kill the uh, coronavirus. So that we have to be very, very careful. The most important aspect now question is now COVID-19, now we are talking about, we are doing a lot of the thinking, how the, this kind of pandemic can be avoided in the future, what should be our preparations. It was uh, never expected that we will have this kind of situation. So all governments are talking about how we will cope up in the future. So when we are talking about, these are all short-term climate risks, so they are the short-term risk COVID-19 for some health risks. Climate risk are a little longer term uh, risk. So probably when we uh, do some preparations for uh, mitigating this kind of COVID-19 situation, we should also discuss along with how we'll cope up with the uh, health impacts related to climate change. That's very, very important. As the world recovers from COVID-19, we must not let short-term fixes prevent us from addressing long-term risk like climate change. That's very, very important. We should also discuss addressing long-term risk associated with the climate change. And uh, there was a report by World Economic Forum recently on 31st March of 2020. So they identified, identified five actions which we can take to address the global climate change crisis. Uh, one is uh, rethink the, the risk involved in uh, uh, health impacts on climate change. Second is uh, listen to global perspective. Now all people are getting together because of COVID-19. So this should help uh, building momentum for strong climate actions. Then make people the top priority. Now our honorable prime minister also recently was talking about make the people on top priority in uh, discussing the, the, the policies, etc. by all the government. Trust the experts, uh, all scientific experts, who are socioeconomic experts, uh, and the yeah, social experts, economic experts, financial experts, and basically people that are doing basic science and technology, etc. The people who government system should trust those experts. That is the fourth uh, uh, 
a fourth point which they have mentioned and make a cultural shift that's the fifth aspect and this uh, is for example uh, surge in cycling and expansion as citizens avoid public transport is happening now the second aspect is uh, we have been experiencing and we have been working from home so this kind of cultural shift also we should uh, seriously discuss and that can uh, really help us to uh, cope up with the threat uh, due to climate change in our uh, system so finally the uh, what we need to do for uh, india so frankly speaking in india there are not many studies on how climate variability affects our health uh, not many studies i should really confess it but i am here has been trying to do some work and they have started a new climate services by providing uh, climate forecast for next few days 15 to 20 days on uh, possible uh, frequency and probability of such events as the uh, climate sorry the climate. so probably we need to really do this kind of analysis and of course we need a robust robust uh, healthcare system we need strategy for adaptation as well as mitigation of health problem due to climate change and uh, with this i would like to stop here um, and i uh, should thank gyan bharati for giving me this opportunity and uh, please uh, stay safe and take care of your family especially elders and the children and uh, my humble uh, submission is we should be optimistic optimistic and hope that the present crisis will get over very soon thank you thank you very much namaskar and take in i will uh, try to answer a few questions Uh, if you are already, what will happen to the earth due to climate change? I already I mentioned, and uh, you can expect the changes in temperature, changes that can be expected. Is there any positive impact or uh, lockdown, Matt? And uh, the morning I was talking about positive impact is because of lockdown is uh, maybe a reduction in air pollution. We have uh, documented now uh, of uh, data from uh, many cities within India as well as outside India. We found that. Uh, air pollution level as especially pm 2.5 and nitrous oxide the nitrous oxide is very harmful and the two summers and ozone concentration has reduced sharply at many places because of lockdown uh, but uh, by reducing for reducing uh, air pollution we should not expect this kind of lockdown should happen in future we should have policies otherwise to reduce air pollution in all major cities as a positive but that i answered what step are we taking out to save our earth we are said told that government is taking uh, action and um, especially uh, they made commitments uh, how to reduce the fossil fuel and how they are going with the uh, alternative energy sources like wind energy as well as uh, uh, solar energy so but this commitment should be made not only by india it should be made by all the countries including country big countries like us australia european countries etc one country committing is not uh, enough for controlling our uh, ability that global warming as well as uh, climate change global warming is related to earthquake uh, no answer is no two important measures for tackling global climate change uh, two measures for tackling global climate change uh, move out from for, uh, use of fossil fuel and uh, go for kind of alternate uh, uh, non conventional energy natural uh, recycled which can be recycled like our uh, solar and uh, wind energy so this is uh, the most important thing which we can do and uh, so also we need development in our country is still growing and so we need development but sustainable development uh, not harming our uh, environment and we should have development and we should invest in infrastructure etc but not harming our uh, natural system uh, do you think that lockdown has positive impact as i told that we had uh, uh, i have um, in the morning also i presented uh, we had a lot of positive impact it uh, in air pollution in the morning and uh, because of the lockdown and also we found that uh, using our seismological observation we found that uh, the air's uh, the seismological noise because seismic noise has reduced and uh, because people are getting earthquakes of even smaller magnitudes uh, for example magnitudes of 2 to 2.4 etc are be uh, uh, being detected out. what about carbon credit trading i am not i am not an expert in carbon credit trading i am not able to tell you very adaptively is there any plan to save india from hottest days in the climate change uh, of course uh, if you control the whole climate change the hotter days also will reduce so we are as i told the government is taking a lot of action to reduce the fossil fuel consumption so that is the uh, the, the commitment which our country has made and uh, we hope that uh, 
because of this commitment. But as I told, all countries should come out and help each other. We need to work.